our song here. And it's a beautiful song. You know, I don't know if you've wondered what the music of heaven will actually be like. But we do know what some of the lyrics are because Revelation gives us Genie. a hint of what they're singing in the what they're singing in the throne room, and that's this beautiful song. It's worthy is the lamb who was slain. Everyone sing along.
Hi, everybody. My name is the Angel Michael. And I am so excited because we angels, we want to tell you a story of maybe one of the most important stories of the entire universe. And it starts out this way. You see, as Jesus and his disciples, as they approached Jerusalem and then they came to Bethpage and then to Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and he said to them, go to the village ahead of you. And just as you enter it, you'll find that there's a cult tied there which no one has ever ridden on. Now untie it and bring it here. Now if anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. Well, they went and they found a colt outside the street, tied at the doorway, just as Jesus said. So they untied it, but then there were some people standing there, and they said, what are you doing untying the colt? And they answered, as Jesus had told them to. And the people let them go. Now, when they brought the colt to Jesus, they threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And then many of the people began to spread their own cloaks on the road while others spread branches that they had cut on the fields. Now, those who went ahead and those who followed started to shout. They shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, hello, I'm the angel Berechai. Can you say Berechai? <laughs> so as my friend Michael was saying, then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparation for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it, they asked. He replied, as you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him in the house that he enters. Say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make preparations there. So they left and found things just as he had told them. And so they prepared the Passover. Jesus knew that the father had put things under his power, all things, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothes, wrapped a towel around his waist, and after that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he was wrapped around with. He came to Simon Peter who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus' reply was amazing. You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you're never going to wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet, and their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his outer garment and returned to his place and asked, do you understand what I have done for you? I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. Greetings, friends. I am the angel Selephiel, and I am going to tell you of the night of anguish of my Lord. You see, it started when they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. 
My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation? The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Watching from the clouds. We are seeing this story from the angel's perspective. Would you like to hear more of the story? Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people make their plans. Thank you. It's great when angels help each other out. <laughs> All the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say. Jesus replied, when he was accused by the chief priest and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now, Get this, it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they all shouted all the louder, crucify him. 
When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hand in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood be on us and on our children. Then he handed then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. My name is Raguel, and I'd like to share some of the things that Jesus had to suffer as he made the sacrifice for us. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross. Then we will believe in him. Were you then when they crucified my My name is Gabriel. After Jesus died, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for Jesus' body. Now, Joseph had been a disciple of Jesus, but only secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took Jesus' body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus secretly at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and the strips of linen 
in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. In that garden, a brand new tomb in which no one had ever been buried. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation for the Sabbath, and because the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. best part of our story. You see, after the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. But you know what they found? There had been a violent earthquake. For you see, an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, he rolled back the stone and he sat on it. And then the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. Come, look at the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him. And now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. Now Jesus later appeared to the eleven as they were eating. At first he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him. And then he said this, and he says it to all of us, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation and whoever believes will be saved and after the lord jesus had spoken to them he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of god
Hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Amen. Before we have our closing prayer, we want to thank some people. First of all, we want to thank Crystal and Bob Aarons. Now, Crystal made us promise that we would not bring her up in front, so we will not. But that doesn't mean you can't give her a good congratulations as you're walking out. Also, I just want to thank everybody who helped to make this possible. You can see their names in the program. I want to thank you for coming. Thank you so much. The Lord is good, and I hope that you get to celebrate this resurrection story over and over again this weekend because we serve a risen Savior. I also want to remind you that as you're going out, we have our offering that's being collected by angels. And so they'll be at the doors. And so as you're leaving, but before we leave, let's just have a word of prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that he's alive. Thank you that we have reasons to say hallelujah. Thank you that that tomb is still empty and he reigns and he sits at the right hand of the Father. And I thank you so much that we can come together and celebrate loudly and unafraid like so many of our brothers and sisters in the world cannot. And I pray for them right now that, that our hearts go out to them and that you will be close to them. And Father God, we pray that everything we've done today will bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.